it's dirty in the morning, day three. It continued to rain overnight, which was kind of a bear, but I did not get out of my hammock. <laughs> Still gloomy, a little bit of a breeze, but it's supposed to clear up. The sun's supposed to pop out, which is nice. Very pretty view, too bad the camera doesn't pick it up quite as much, but let's get up and get at them. So now we're up and at them. I'm about 60% packed. Then the call for breakfast came out. They, uh, once they get up and going, it doesn't take them long, but very nice campsite. They got these picnic tables with these big lodge poles. There's three of them. You know, that allows them to hang tarps and things like that to keep people out of the rain because it was raining when we got here. Right on the water. Still gorgeous out. There's my Wunganir tarp right out there. Lovely morning. Right. Sure. Maybe I'd like to start on the seven grain cereal. We've worked you guys up to seven grains here. <laughs> Weaning you in with four yesterday. So just when I got into camp, I mean it was still raining pretty good. I had to run out and set up a tarp quick just to house gear before I got you know the hammock set up and things. Uh, this is the Wingonier tarp. It's a 10 by 10. Uh, it's lightweight. It compacts well. Um, it does have the catenary cuts which, you know, in retrospect, wasn't the greatest idea because when I pitch it close to the ground, it's got those those gaps there. But all in all, it's a pretty good tarp. I did make my own tie-outs, and they're quick release, so I can do different <coughs> configurations and things, you know, the tensioner pulleys and things like that. But what's nice about having the carabiners on there is, uh, you know, you can just unclip it, clip it to the next tie-out, maybe fold it in some doors or something like that. I did the same with the ridge line. Little makeshift clothesline inside because uh, everything is wet. <laughs> um, but I'm glad I brought it. Um, you know, I can even use this for better coverage uh, on the uh, on the RER, REI uh, hammock. But but it worked out really well last night. Did get wet as usual, which still surprises me for such a rain fly on that hammock. All right, pushed off. Now we're still in Eagle Lake. On our way uh, to a river. What's the river called, Brian? We're on the, on our way to Churchill Dam. Okay, Churchill Dam, where there's a class two rapid, and they how far of a? We got about a one hour paddle till we get to the dam. Okay, hour paddle till we get to the dam. So we're out here in the open water. We practice doing some maneuvers, some you know draws, some cross draws, things like that, just to help maneuver the canoe, you know, uh, around the rapids. And we're in a we're in a bigger boat. We're in a twenty foot tripper. Um, which isn't quite as maneuverable, but it, but it rides a little higher and it's it's a good steady, you know, um, stable boat. But it's another gorgeous day, and I think the wind's coming out of the, what, the south west, probably helping to push us along a little bit this morning. But you know, day three, off and running. Just up ahead, we're coming up upon another dam. Just on the other side is the river and the rapids. So this is where we take out, and uh, we take all our gear out, and one of the rangers takes all our gear in a truck and runs it all the way downstream to where we pick it up at the end because you want to go down the rapids, you know, pretty light and maneuverable, you know, without being, you know, weighed down too much. So it'd be a it'd be a pretty good adventure. There you go, loading up. The boxes over there, they're called Wanigans, which is basically a, a box that holds everything for camp gear, cookware, food, everything. And they fit perfectly in a canoe, but there's the Ranger truck, and it's gonna truck all our stuff. The dam again right back there. Oh yeah, you leave That's how you load. 13 people's load of gear. <laughs> so I just got done portaging all the canoes over. Here's where we came from, up to Churchill Dam here. And then uh, that's where it spills out. And down there is where the rapids start. A little, uh, there's a little history center right there we're gonna visit real quick. But just a little update. Uh, 
as far as all the wet feet and everything and obviously my boots are wet inside but I decided to go ahead and put my wet socks back on and put them back in the boots and you know what my feet are doing great they feel dry even though I know they're not but the wool socks you know it's, it's really a wonder fabric so if you're going to be on a wet trip with a little bit of chill in the air get yourself some wool but I'm on top of the on top of the dam now just rushing out of there Way down in the distance, you can see the rapid start. So it gets real technical from here. So we're gonna really put our skills into maneuvering a canoe left, right, and everything here in just a little bit, and it'll be a lot of fun. A lot of old-time equipment from canoes to big multi-burner wood stoves, axes, saws, carriages. A lot of history in here. Yeah, yeah. Old telegraphs and phones. Yeah, yeah. I went by and saw the plane that was paddling down the ground pond. I go, what the heck is that? Get up there and the plane's sitting there, right? It's kind of like pretty sweet. staged in line right now to hit the first set of rapids like I said it's only a class two but it's very technical and I guess it's a lot of fun so I've got the PFD on uh, the canoe is virtually empty um, and we're bringing up the rear so uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to do a good job navigating and try to follow the uh, the lines that people in front of us are following and hopefully they're good lines so gonna get a little bit of video of it and uh, we're hoping we don't go over and I lose the camera that'd be bad all right, here we go. All right, making a slow approach. It's a gorgeous sunny day. And uh, we're bringing up the rear. We're following Wilkie and Silvers. And hopefully uh, they pick a pretty good route. But uh, the water is uh, its moving pretty good up there. And I'm sure the camera will be rocking and rolling. So uh, we can already feel we're, we're, going, we're picking up some speed for sure. I am kneeling in the canoe for a low center of gravity, you know, uh, with my butt against the seat, so I'm, I'm pretty stable. So we're going to see how this goes. All right. All right, Brian. I knocked the phone into the boat. <laughs> All right.
went through quite a few rapids. We had a couple guys in front of us damn near go over. They got um, broadside uh, quite a few times. But now we're just letting the river take us downstream. Just gotta avoid anything too, you know, too crazy. But don't paddle for speed, but paddle for control. You know, watch for any pitfalls. And it seems pretty good. So that's Chip. You know, we're waiting on the other two to come down. And Chip is a, you know, world-class holder, I guess. As far as uh, pulling canoes, probably the best in the world. And stand-up canoeing. I mean, this guy has been doing it for years and years and years. And it's just like, you know, summer's day walk down a trail for him. All right, there they go. We got two really tall guys in a boat. 6'4", 6'5". Hey! We got the Scott and EK up there. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming in. Look at that. Good job, guys. Well, that was Devil's Elbow. That was a couple little quick turns in there, which I thought worked out really well. But this part of the trip is fantastic. You know, you don't have to use a lot of horsepower, you know, on, on you know, sections like this. The, the current just carries you down, which really stays on your back and your shoulders and, and all that kind of stuff. But the sun's coming out, which is an absolute plus. My, my paddling partner back there is just rocking and rolling, and I'm really appreciative of his instruction. He's uh, got a lot of experience, you know, on the water, so so I'm grateful for that. So, thanks, Brian. You bet. And now we're just gonna enjoy a, you know, a little lazy stream here until we hit the the last class two down there. Just got done running the rapids. Now we just pulled up to a, a little site where the rangers dropped off all of our gear. It was lined up all perfectly. And uh, pulled out some lunch, turkey, some of the kielbasa from last night, you know, cheese, you know, what is this, Swiss or provolone or something, I don't know, but it's it's damn good. You really work up an appetite when you're, you're paddling, you're on the water, and, and food is absolute paramount. Nutrition is very important to get in the calories because you're burning a whole lot of them. But, Everything, everywhere you look is just like a postcard. The colors, the air, the river, the rocks, it's all amazing. Made a little stop at the uh, Allagash Spring. I was expecting some big, nice, flowing spring, but it looks to be just the hose coming out of the island here. <laughs> but it's the best water, I guess, on the Allagash. Seems, uh, seems odd, but hey, see what you gotta do. <laughs> well, just made it to the ledges, ledges camp. As soon as we got out of that little canal way in the, into the main lake uh, of uh, Umsaxis or something like that, the wind hit us brutally hard. And we had to just paddle nonstop right after, you know, getting that uh, that spring. But uh, found a pretty good site, you know, up above. The uh, camp is down there. But uh, got a pretty good, you know, look over the water just through the trees. Not a bad place to be. Got a clothesline. I gotta, gotta dry some stuff out. But here's to relaxing and getting dry. All right, finally got camp set up. I was even able to take a quick dip in the in the lake, which was cold but invigorating. Got to wash all the sensitive parts, and I even did some laundry while I was in there. So, got it all set up in porch mode, cut a couple limbs to keep it up, but behind the, the hammock, as you can see, I just strung a, uh, you know, the clothesline where all the, all the uh, underwear and socks are, are being dried out, and that's what's nice about these lightweight fabrics, you know, they dry out really, really quick, 
I mean, they do, you know, hold a little bit of stink, but you know, as long as you're not marinating in your own filth for too long, it, <laughs> it's usually okay. But I'm gonna head down to camp and just kind of enjoy some time with the group. Uh, maybe do a little boot repair and we'll try to get that leak, you know, um, taken care of once again. But great view, feeling fantastic. Coming down to the end of day three, dinner is just about done. Another outstanding meal from the looks of it. Chicken and vegetables and some kind of awesome dessert. Up on the bluff, and here's a little lookout. The wind is cranking pretty good. But look how extremely gorgeous this is. Just phenomenal. This is a great trip. Man. Well, we're coming to the end of day three. Had a great dinner. It's supposed to get cold tonight, like 39 degrees, something like that. So some people are worried about it, but I've got plenty of gear to keep me warm. I'm usually pretty warm as it is anyways, but a few more days of this and it's time to go home. But I'm I'm absolutely loving every minute of, the, of this. I'm very, very glad to be out here. Why do people who snore fall asleep first? Thank you.